Hey, I'm here with Joe Rotella, and he has an easy Japanese stab binding for us, right? We do. Traditionally called Fukura Toji, it means pocketbook. Very easy to make with just four holes. So we're going to start with paper that's twice the width of our book and fold them in half. And I've got some done. If you could do some for me there, okay. that would be great. In this case, we have a stack of 16 of these. This would be traditionally done with washi paper, and the washi paper was so thin, they had to fold it in half so that they could write on both sides and not have it come through. So, of course, you can make your paper any size that you want. It's just the original sheets have to be twice the size that you want for the pages. Absolutely. So I'm stacking them up. Julie's got nice creases there. You could always use a bone folder to really get a good I was going to say, but you're kind of born with a bone folder, aren't you? You Built just in tools. I love put it, it right in there. So this is the beginnings of our book block. And I've got now sheets that are only the size of the book. They're not folded. They're just single oh, so sheets. So that's just a single piece of paper. One for the top, one for the bottom. OK. And then you're going to drill holes just to hold this together. And you could mark them, but I made a little template. This is, of course, on the website. I, I also want you to show one of the things that you told me that surprised me because I was confused because I thought you were binding it incorrectly because you mm -hmm. actually have your uh, markings on what I thought was the wrong side. And remember, the traditional books, the the scored or the folded side are, is on the outside. So you only actually have two sides to write on. You don't write on that inside. So I've got a bit set up here. You could use an awl and a hammer, but you know, I love my tiny tools. You love your tools. I do, I do. So I'm just gonna make these four holes. And of course you wear glasses, but if you didn't, you'd always wear safety glasses whenever you're working with a power tool. Of course. Safety first. <laughs> so you're gonna drill those holes, and it, are you drilling them a particular size? Is it arbitrary? Is it just the size of your needle? Is it the size of your thread? Really, really, really good question. You want the holes to be as small as they can so that the needle is tight, but not so tight that you can't get the needle through. And all we're gonna do is go in through the top, and you can see this is tight. I was gonna say, that's always the thing for me, which is the eye of the needle is the biggest part when you're binding, and so that's always the point where you have to say, is your hole big enough? But if it's too loose, then the string is usually, exactly. you know, gonna fall and out so or something like that. And so all we have that. to do is this tie it here in a knot, yep. and we're gonna do the same thing on this side, and we're done. And now we've made a book block. Okay. So with that out of the way, I've got one here ready to go. So I've got these done. Don't worry about the so tails. So it's interesting. I just want to point out, you did sew each of these separately. It's not yes. one continuous string. No, they are separate. And now don't worry about the tails. The next thing we want to do is get a cover made for this. And so traditionally, you would lay the whole book block on a piece of paper. And then you would fold it up around the edges and then take it off. And well, I was making a lot of these as gifts, so it was easy to just create a template out of cardboard. I was gonna say, this could be an old cereal box, it could be anything left over. It's it's not gonna actually do anything right except to be used yep. as a template. And all I'm doing is folding up over it to get my score lines. And then Super I'm gonna easy. use a pair of scissors. And cut off the those edges. Corners. I'll grab your scissors for you. You're so great. Here you go. This is the benefit of crafting with an assistant. With a friend. So see how we're just <laughs> cutting off the corner right next to where that is? Yeah, so you're actually doing a triangle cut. And that's because when we go ahead and fold these over, um, notice I'm not folding these over the book block. That's another thing people try to do. I was saying, do. you're not folding it over the cardboard template. No, no, it's no. just the paper. Now, are you having to use a heavier paper in order to make these covers, or is it still a soft This is a very paper? soft paper, because this is a Japanese paper, so it's very fine. And you can see why we trim that edge, is because it gives us a really nice, like a... Mm -hmm. Like you're making a bed. You don't have all that bulk. Right. It's in very the corner. easy. And I've got them already done here. I can see that. And it book. is nice how those mitered corners work. And even if you have a gap, it's still fine. This one is right together, but this one has a gap. We're no never one's going to see it. it. No one's going to see it. So the next thing we need to do is protect the corners of the book. And so I've got these little butterflies cut out of book cloth. I was say, it looks like those bandages that you get, you know, yeah. if you have a cut or something. And they're called butterfly they're bandages butterflies. for a reason. So all we're gonna do is take the butterfly book cloth, put it right on the corner there, wrap it. Okay, and, and if people, if you need over. this pattern for the butterflies, we're gonna have that on the Make It Artsy website. See how that's gonna protect that whole corner? Yeah. Just great. And then we'll do the same on this corner. 
And then we're going to go ahead and get ready to actually put so our binding So that's an interesting together. idea. I never thought about that because the part of the book that often gets sort of damaged or knocked around is those little delicate corners. And this is going to stop that this from happening. This is going to stop it. So now we just want to put on Is our, this fabric? It is. It is cloth. Okay. It's very cool. And now I'm not going to wait for this to dry. I would just put a layer of adhesive here. Even with the strings in there? It, with the, we're going to bury the strings. So oh, so you're not going to cut them right off. Right there by our cover. You know, I remember um, used to, real book binders, which you are, talking about how you actually try not to cut the strings because it tends to pull the knots out. So I've got one done here that, let me take my... I call them clamps, but that, that's not uh, our Binder clips. Clamp. <laughs> so, I, they are clamps, essentially, because that's what they're doing. And if you had a much larger book, you could actually use a clamp. So there's the cover. You can see it's adhered just to that top okay. page. Our, our folding is on the outside. It's beautiful. Now we're going to drill the holes for our uh, binding itself. I'll let you attach that okay. while I change this bit. I'm using a slightly larger bit now because I have to have room for a thicker cord, and I have to pass through it a couple times. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just drill one hole in this. And of course, if you're looking for the patterns for the stitching or anything else like that, you can find that all on the Make It Artsy website. Look how easy that goes through compared to It does, to a just like butter. Now, once you have the four holes, you can stitch it lots of different ways. We have some examples here with a simple stab binding. We have a noble binding with the fancy corners and then a tortoise shell. You can add more holes and do crocus, butterfly, but the principle is the same, everything up to the pattern.